Hello and welcome to the Combined Joint Task Force's DCS Refresher Course video series. This lesson is intended for members of our BMFA-122 Werewolves Virtual Squadron and will cover the A-10C-2 Tank Killer. As with all our refresher courses, this will not be an in-depth tutorial, but rather a fairly fast-paced review of the aircraft systems and procedures. Alright, once I begin the startup procedure, I'm going to be moving fairly quickly, so before I begin I wanted to touch on a few things. First of all, the left and right AC generator and four boost pump switches now start in the on position, so we will not be touching those during the startup procedure. Also, back here in the right corner, we have the new Scorpion HMCS control switch and panel. On the left, this blank panel here is going to be the ARC-210 sat radio once they add it. I may do a supplemental video to cover that when they do. During my startup, I will be turning on the laser TGP and the jammer here. The reason for that is they are already on the aircraft. If you're doing your startup while you're loading ordnance or you're going to be loading ordnance after you start up, do not turn on these three switches. If you do, they will cause conflictions when you're trying to use those systems. Also, I leave my JTRS switch off until after my nav is aligned because I've had issues in the past where I wasn't able to send target data to elements in my flight and I sussed it out that that's what the issue was. Uh, you can if you want to, you may not have any issues, but I leave it off. You just need to remember to turn it on before you take off if you do that. Also, I will be going over the new fast align system. It takes about half the time that the normal align does. When the CDU comes on, you're going to see a blue screen up here. As soon as the blue screen goes away and you have your standard black screen with green text around the, the outside edge, you need to reference your right hand knee area for the CDU main screen because that's where we're going to be setting up the fast align. If you wait too long to do it and you try to set up fast align after the regular line has got started, you're going to run into an issue where everything will say it's aligned, but you will not be able to flip your EAC on. It, you'll flip it forward and it'll kick back. And that's the issue. So you want to make sure that you catch it. I will point it out as I'm doing it, but just letting you know beforehand that's what's going to happen. I'm going to begin by left clicking and holding the closed canopy, right clicking my battery and inverter, come across, right click to arm the ejection seat, left click for APU start. Anti-skid, taxi light, right click for my left MSCD, right click for laser TGP and the kick you, left click once for the IFFCC, rotate to uncage, right click for my right MSCD, right click to put it on semi for my countermeasures panel, left click for all of its corresponding switches, come down, left click for the Iggy CDU and put the steer point in flight plan, go ahead and turn on my APU generator, push up my left throttle here, come across to turn on my radios come back over here actually let me put my pinky switch aft for my lights this is the blue screen I was talking about go ahead and set my lights up real quick turn on my SAS as well as take off trim come back over here Watching for the APU gen light. There we go. We can turn the APU gen off. See my gauges up here are settling out. All right, my screen just went black, so I'm going to need to hit INS, Alt Align, and then Fast. We'll start next to Fast. Go ahead and click Load, as well as push my right throttle forward. See everything's going good. Just checking around the cockpit. Let me go ahead and turn my Pito heat on. Alright, go ahead and uh, turn on my helmet mount display. Yeah, everything should be loaded now. On the CDU, come across it at the DMS. Alright, to get rid of this box from your helmet mount display, go ahead and hold DMS left long and it'll turn it off. We're waiting for the nav to line while we're doing that. I'll go ahead and set up my GBUs. I'm gonna go to profile. Select GBU 12, view profile, set it to CCRP, change settings, auto lays to on, 15 seconds, set that to my lays time, and then hit save profile. That way when I drop my bombs, they'll auto lays 15 seconds out from impact, so I don't have to worry about it. Alright, waiting on this, it's almost done, just a few seconds. 
Yeah, the facet line is way faster than the old, I guess the standard, I should say. All right, so INS nav ready. Click next to nav, come down, click EGI. A switch to the on position, and we are good to go, minus the JTRS. Do not forget that. If you get up and you notice you don't have any of the flight icons or symbology, and you know you got people in your flight or other A-10s are up, and you don't see them, that's why you left it off. All right, give us some, one more glance around the cockpit. Everything looks good to go. All right, briefly, I'll cover the radios over here. In order to uh, use or set up preset frequencies, by default, it's, you set it to man, and that's going to be using whatever frequency is here. To preload a frequency, choose whatever you want. Choose a channel by left, right-clicking this knob, and then click and hold this load button right here. Let me get down here. Yeah, this load button right here. And that will say whatever you have here to whatever you have loaded here. Then you will need to right click to put it in PRE and then choose whatever channel here that you want to use and that will use from that. That is the same for this radio as well as this radio. To load a frequency into this one, you will first need to left click that little cover and then it's the same process. You choose whatever channel you want here, choose what frequency you want to hear and then click this red load button. Close the cover when you're done and then you will need to set your radio from manual to preset and then choose whatever channel you want to use. All right, I'm not going to be covering taxing or taking off in this video, though remember to enable your nose wheel steering before attempting to leave your parking area. All right, now that we're airborne, I'm going to go ahead and cover methods for creating waypoints using both bulls calls and coordinates. The coordinates we're going to be using are latitude and longitude as well as UTM to just kind of cover all the bases. The bulls calls you'll be receiving from other friendly air elements such as uh, fighter groups or AWACS. The coordinates you'll be receiving from JTACs, air elements, or even from yourself on the F-10 map. First, I'd like to point out that down here on the CDU, you have both a number pad as well as a full letter keyboard and dedicated function buttons. You can activate all of those from the upfront controller, though, if you don't want to go heads down by first hitting the function button and then the corresponding number to activate the function that is listed below it and the LTR button to activate letters and then press the number with the corresponding letters below it, though note, you may have to press the same number multiple times in rapid succession to flip through the numbers. So it is faster to use the keypad down here. I have all of this hot key for quick access. We're going to go ahead and start with the bulls call. To do that, we're going to first go to the CDU page and then hit function four for the offset. As you'll note, the current selected position is the initial position. So if we were to do an offset right now, it would be from this position. We want to make it for the bulls. So when we receive bulls calls to do that, we hit function and then the select rocker down and it will take us to our bulls call. Now I know that our target range is at 079 for 34. That needs to be input in a six digit format. So we're going to go 079034 into the scratch pad and then hit the OSB next to magnetic heading and distance. Now I want to name my waypoint so it's going to be TAR because I know it's my target range. And then I want to hit the OSB next to the question mark four to make this my fourth waypoint. So now that is done. All right, next I'm going to show you how to get the coordinates yourself on the map. If you're wanting to just find a location, like let's say right here, you'd put your cursor over it and then use these coordinates in the top left. Though the A10 uses a decimal three digit latitude and longitude format, to get to that you want to hold the left alt and then press Y to cycle through. You see the coordinates that have the dot three digit format and then wherever you put your cursor you copy that number down and that will give you your coordinates if the vehicles are showing on the map as i have them set up here you can actually click on the vehicle and then it will show you its exact coordinates down here in the lower left you can get the utm coordinates as well we'll go ahead and hold left alt and hit y to cycle to that and the coordinates can be found in the top left for wherever your cursor is or the bottom left for the location of the vehicle and the, you want to pay attention to the these two letters here and then these two strings of numbers. That's what you're going to be inputting. All right, we'll go ahead and go back up front. First, we want to hit function three to select our waypoint page. And then from here, you can choose the different types of points you can make. We're going to be making a waypoint. Then on here, you'll see the latitude and longitude as well as UTM coordinates. Unlike the bull's call, you want to begin by creating the waypoint before you put in your coordinates. If you input the coordinates right now, you'll actually be editing the initial position as opposed to creating a new waypoint. So I'm going to be doing one of those SAMs that was down there, so I'm going to name it SAM1. 
and then hit the OSB next to question mark 5 to create a fifth waypoint. Now I'm going to enter my coordinates, 3556509. That is my northing, so I'll hit the OSB next to it. Now note the eastings need to be put in in a 323 three digit format, so I'm going to have to add a leading zero, so my easting is going to be 03629169, and then hit the OSB near the easting. Alright, so that one is complete. Also note that when you input the coordinates, the elevation will default to the ground level there. If you're trying to make a waypoint for a flight plan, you may want to raise it up off the ground. Next, we're going to hit the OSB there to switch to UTM, and we're going to put in our second coordinate. Note that when you input the letters and numbers, you do it all at once with no spaces. That's going to be VV74658778. Oh, but wait, I forgot to create my waypoint, so it would have overwritten the previous one. So I'll go ahead and do SAM2, and then create my sixth waypoint. Now re-input my coordinates, VV74658778. All right, if I would have put that in as I did before, it would have overwritten the fifth waypoint, and I would have had two waypoints pointing to the same target. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and select my TGP, put it in air-to-ground mode, hit my boat switch aft to go into IR mode, coolly right long to make my right MSCD the center of interest, and then go, actually, before I get into that, we need to switch the gear point from flight plan to mission, so we'll be using our new waypoints. As well, you can make the HUD your center of interest and go DMS up or down to cycle through your waypoints, but you can use the steer point rocker here while any sensor is your center of interest to cycle through the uh, waypoints. That way you don't have to keep switching your center of interest. I set mine up on a HOTAS hotkey so I can do it really quickly as such. So we're going to be looking for number four. This is going to be our bull's call. And I'm going to go China hat board long to lay my TGP there and let's find out. Go ahead and bring my nose around so we can get on target here. All right, so this was the general area. As you can see, we got targets out here. Go ahead and try to have board long, slave back, and then cycle through. This is going to be our first waypoint that we input via latitude and longitude. As you can see, it's the SAM. And then this is going to be our second one from UTM coordinates, right on top of them. All right, next I want to cover sharing target data with other friendly flight elements. The quickest and easiest way for A-10s to share targeting data is to go TMS left long. And as you'll see over here, the speed on is now on. That is broadcasting my speed to all friendly A-10s that are on this net. They'll see that both on the PAD with a symbol symbology of a dashed line going to it, blue line, as well as if they have their helmet mounted system on, they will see that there as well. Also, I have a uh, A-10 behind me here. I can see what flight element he is by making my TAD my center of interest and then slewing my cursor over him like a hook him real quick with TMS up short and then down here in the bottom I'll see his information alright his flight position number is 2 in group 01 I can change my flight by going to net I can see that my own ID is 01 and I'm in group 2 if I switch to 01 make that my group now I'm flight lead ID 01 in group 1. He is group 1, 2, so he's my wingman. And now he's blue. I can send my target data to him if I have something as my center point of interest by, again, hooking him. And then over here you will see where it says 0201 send. If I press send, that has just sent my current speed information to him. He'll get a warning saying message received. He'll either be able to press this OSB over here to accept, which will make it a red diamond on his TAD, or over here he will be able to cancel it and not accept it. If he accepts it, he can then slave his cursor over to it, hook it, make it his center point of interest, and slave his TGP or Maverick or whatever he wants to that. Also, highlight something. I'll go ahead and hook this real quick. It will bring up this hook own over here. You can cycle through this to make it bulls to hook this now is saying that from the bullseye to my hook, which is this dashed line, this over here is the 
firing and range from it so you can make a bull's call off of this. So I can tell people this is uh, zero bulls 052 for 31, they will find this point here. Also you can change to bull's cursor right here and now the bullseye will point to wherever your cursor is. So if someone gives you a bull's call, instead of making an offset, you can quickly pull this up and they said, they say, you know, 047 for 31. So then you would just have to move this around and find 047 for 31 and then hit TMS right short, make a mark point. Now you have that mark point. So that's a little bit of a quicker method than going into the offset page to create a waypoint, but there you go. All right, next I wanted to cover the scorpion helmet mounted integrated queuing system as it has added a lot of situational awareness and target management capabilities to the aircraft. I'm going to go ahead and re-enable mine with DMS left long. All right, first I want to show you that my wingman back here is showing up with a blue circle and a number inside indicating his position in my flight and a number underneath indicating his distance from me. If there were other A-10s out here that a length, they would be showing the same but with a green circle and the distance to them. All right, my dashed line here on the cross of my helmet mount to display points me towards my current speed. And these dashed lines here are the angle you're looking at. I don't really like those because they kind of clutter things up. So I'm going to make the helmet mount to display my sensor of interest with Cooley up twice. Do that by this little dot here. And then with DMS right short, I can switch programs. I like program two because by default it has those lines off. Also, when you come up here to the HUD, all the symbology disappears and that's to keep things nice and decluttered. But I like to have my cross on, that way if a SAM gets launched ahead of me where I'm flying, I can actually make my helmet my center of interest and make a mark point real quick where it came out without having to turn my plane or whatever. Also, I like to have the TGP diamond on, that way when I'm doing gun runs and I'm at six miles out and I've got the gun rectangle on it, usually all the symbology will disappear. By doing this, you can actually keep that TGP diamond to help you stay on target. To do that, come down, go to the stats page, the HMCS page. I've already got program two selected. For the crosshairs, the OCLD stands for occluded. I'm gonna go ahead and change that to always on, and then come down to the TGP diamond and make that always on as well. Go back to the TGP, and let's have a look at our target area, which is pretty much right behind us. Let me go ahead and come around. All right, looking back at our target, we can see the SAM-1, SAM-2 in target that we created earlier. The yellow box is our current selected steer point, which is SAM-1. The three-tiered white wedding cake indicates our center point of interest, and the dashed green box here indicates the TGP's current field of view. If another element is broadcasting their speed, you will see the white wedding cake, but only two-tiered. From there, you can hook it with TMS up short, by putting your crosshair over it and you will get that new little dash box with a yellow line pointing towards your hooked point. You can make that your center point of interest and slave it to it or with TMS right short you can make a mark point anywhere you're looking. You might notice that I'm a bit wobbly here that's because I'm doing it with my head and it can be kind of hard to do. You can fix that by slewing while your helmet is your center of interest and it will move a ground stabilized box off which makes putting precise mark points way easier. To undo that, you just go China hat aft short and it will put it back on your cross. Also, you can slave your TGP to your crosshairs if your TGP is your center point of interest. If, it's, if your center point of interest is a mark point or a waypoint, you won't be able to do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my TGP my center of interest and then using TMS up long, I'm gonna make or my TGP my center point of interest. And then if I look out here to the side, I just have to go DMS right long and it will slave my TGP. But you'll notice it's a bit wonky and it keeps moving. So to help with that, I want to ground stabilize by making my helmet my center point interest and then do the DMS right long and boom, there it'll stay. All right, that's all I'm really going to cover on the helmet mounted display. If you want to learn any more, there's plenty of videos out there. I'm going to go ahead and move on to weapons employment. All right, I'm not going to be covering unguided munitions except for the guns. I'm going to begin with the Mavericks. First, make sure that you uh, turn your EO on whenever you're headed towards the range. That way it's ready to go by the time you get there. I'm going to begin by making mark points on the target range so I can do a six Mav pass as it's uh, thick with 
Sam's in AAA down there. I don't want to have to keep making re-attacks, so I'm going to do this all in one go. Right now I have the Sam 1 that we previously made a waypoint for, but I want to make it a mark point just so it's easier for me to deal with later. So made my right MSDD my center of interest with Cooley right long. Now I'm going to make my TGP my center point of interest with TMS up long. So now it's my center point of interest. And I'm going to make a mark point with TMS right short. All right, and then just so I can find my other SAM target, I'm going to go up here and look at my dash, make a SAM 2. And then I'm going to hit TMS aft long to make my uh, waypoint SAM 2, my center point interest. And then with China hat forward long, I can snap over to real quick. And then just again, TGP, make my center point of interest. And then make it a mark point. Now I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to find some other targets. I know there's at least four other... Sam's, or not Sam's, but AAA out here. Go ahead and find those guys. Laser designating them to increase the accuracy of the mark point. Alright, now that the mark points have been made, I'm going to come down here and switch my rotary knob to mark point. I'm going to set my mark points as my center point interest with TMS aft long and then slave my TGP to it with trying to have forward long. Alright so that should be my first target and as you can see up here on the dash mark point A and as I cycle through it cycles through all those targets those six targets. Come back around to mark point A. Now doing a quick map strike you can do with the HUD as making it your center point of interest and using your uh, DMS up and down to switch to your next steer points but that adds an extra element in and it slows you down. So again, that's where having this steer point rocker over here hot keyed in on something on your HOTAS will speed things up. Because as you can see, I'm hitting just that hot key, if you see over here, and it's just flicking through all the targets, and that will speed up your map strike dramatically. I'm going to go ahead and make my left MFCD my center of interest with Cooley left long, and then slave it to that point with the China hat forward long. And as soon as I come around on target again, we'll begin our run. So as I'm doing this, I'm going to kind of hat forward short to zoom in. And then going to be using TMS forward short to force the lock on the map. Once the map has got the lock and I've fired, I will switch targets using my steer point rocker hotkey. Then I will use China hat forward long to slave the map to that new point. China hat forward short to zoom in. TMS up short to lock fire and repeat until I get all maps away. So as you can see down here, TMS up short, trying to force the lock. There we go, got the lock, rifle, switching targets, slaving to the new one, zooming in, forcing the lock, switch, force the lock, fire, switching, slaving, zooming, forcing the lock, Fire, switching, slaving, zooming, force lock, fire. So all maps are away, and I can roll off target. Then down here, go ahead and rotate back through. That's my first target. Deck. Well, I guess we're masked, but there we go. All targets destroyed. That's how you do a really quick map pass. You just need to make sure that all your stuff is set up. All right, next, we're going to be doing a JDAM strike using GB38. I've already marked all four targets out here. The topology has changed from the previous version. We no longer have the unwinding circle in the center. Now instead going to be using the same vertical line to line up. But we're going to be focused over here on the left hand side. We've got our GB38s. They're armed, ready. We're watching now for the dynamic launch zone. 
I'm going to continue to fly towards this target. You see now that the launch zone has appeared. This is our maximum launch zone. This is our minimum. Though I have noticed, I'm not sure if they're going to fix it, but currently in this version, if you launch just within the maximum range in about here, your bombs will actually fall short. So for the moment, you need to make sure you launch kind of in the middle. All right, we're coming down to the launch zone. Once you're inside, you'll see manual release. And you're going to just press and hold to release. As I said, I'm going to wait just a little bit to get a little bit closer. All right, pressing and releasing. You'll see the red light flash. That means the bomb of the way. Press release. Switch targets. Come over just a little bit. Press and release. Switch targets. Press release. All right, all four bombs are away, as indicated by the empty. Now we just need to wait for them to impact. As with most bombs, the first bomb you dropped will most likely hit last. So this here, that was the first bomb that I dropped and it just impacted the BTR-80. Alright, so that's how you employ those. Alright, uh, the JDAMs, they're only meant for static targets. Those were vehicles, but I knew they weren't going to move. If you're going to drop them on a vehicle group, drop them one at a time. If you drop more than that and the vehicles move, all the rest of the bombs will impact the dirt. Now the GPU-54s have the capability to drop as a JDAM, as we just did, or as a LGB. So you can drop those in pairs, but you'll need to drop on one target, switch, drop on a second, and then switch back to your first, put it in point track, and be standing by for when the bomb impacts. If the first target decides to try to drive away, you just activate your laser and the bomb will track the laser. All right, next we're going to cover laser guided munition. I'm going to begin by showing you how to set up your laser codes. If you come to the TGP and go to the CNTL page, you can change your laser code or the laser code that you're spot searching for using the scratch pad. As well, while I'm in here, I'm going to turn my latch to the on. That way, as my ordnance is in route to the target, I don't have to hold down the laser button the entire time. I can toggle it on and toggle it off. To change the laser code of your ordnance, come to the DSMS page, go to the inventory tab, and then note that my I have a single GBU-12 on this rack with the pod opposite it. Choose whatever ordnance you're wishing to switch laser code. I'll go ahead and do the Maverick. If you're using Maverick, select missile. If you're doing the laser rockets, use rocket. If you're doing the GBU-12, use GBU. When you go in, you will find the options for the ordnance that can be on that station. For the laser Maverick, we're going to go AGM-65L, which is right here. You would input the new code you want and then press the OSB above code. And then for load, if you want it on both stations opposite each other, you'd use load symmetrical. If you want it only on one station, like that single GBU-12 I had, you would hit just load. All right, let's come back out and go to the map page. Make sure as you're in route to EO on your map so it has time to align. I'm going to go ahead and make my HUD my center of interest. And then select my Mavericks. And then I'm going to make my left MFCD my center of interest with Kula left long. And then with the boat switch, we can actually go boat forward to move this flashing cursor to a number that we want to change, and then go boat switch app to switch it. As long as you leave it in app, it'll cycle through, and then you can push it forward to stop it when you get to the code that you want. All right, I'm back inbound on the target. As you can see, I have a BRDM down here. I'm going to go ahead and hit my latch lays on, make my Maverick my center of interest, and then with TMS up short, I'm going to uncage it, and you'll see it jump down to the target. You can see that by the circle going down on the HUD as well as this box within the circle crossed here on the MAV page. Go ahead and weapon release. Make sure that the laser stays on the target while it's in flight. Boom, got a hit. Make sure to turn off your laser latch. All right, I'm back inbound with a GBU-12. I have a target designated with the TGP. I will not be lasing manually this time as I set up a 15 second auto laze on startup. What I'm going to be doing is flying the velocity vector along the vertical steering line, watching for the small circle, solid circle at the top of the line to begin dropping, which should happen around 10 seconds. At about five seconds, it will pass through the velocity vector, at which point I will press and hold the pickle button. 
And as it passes through the pepper, the bomb will fall off. Again, as with the Mavericks, all we have to do is make sure that the target stays within the TGP's field of view until impact. You can see by the flashing L that the auto lays has been activated. Impact and the laser will stop now. All right, I am back inbound for a laser guided rocket run. These things are quite useful. And if two vehicles are sitting close to each other, go ahead and rifle off. Make sure to latch my laser down here so that they can track the target. If you have targets that are sitting close enough together, you can actually fire a couple, wait, fire a couple more. And then when the first couple impact, you can actually drag the laser over to the new target turn my latch off and actually strike multiple targets with one pass. The HE versions are useful for infantry and unarmored vehicles. The penetrator ones are good for lightly armored vehicles and can take out medium armor with a couple of hits. The heavy armor they struggle with, but if you can get them from the back, you're going to have to use a whole bunch. But if you're already going to be rocketing something, you might as well take these. All right, I'm coming back around. I have my guns activated. As you can see, we get close, the diamond from the helmet mounted display is remaining in the HUD because I removed the occlusion for it. Alright, I briefly wanted to touch on air to air weapons as well. You can carry two AIM-9s on your wingtip as well as use guns. I'm going to go ahead and press and hold the master mode button to switch into air to air mode. The small circle up here is your AIM-9 seeker as well as these lines going away is where your gun rectangle is now. If you press TMS up short, it will allow the AIM-9 to do a small scan in the center. As well, if you push China Hat forward short, it will uncage the seeker, allowing it to travel around the HUD. To recage it, you want to go TMS aft short. This will also break a lock if you happen to have one. When you have a target locked, you'll get a growl tone and fire. And to engage with guns, you just drag the guns across. There's a couple of hips out here somewhere. I'm going to go find them, and then I'll come back. All right, I'm flying towards one of the hips here now. I can barely see him over here. Or at least I had him for a second. Let me go ahead. Oh, there he is. Got a tone. And see the... The actual heat seeker was trying to track on his flares. Put another one from in close. And again, it tracked the flares, so I'm going to go for guns. Totally missed. Going to have to come back around. You want to just drag your crosshairs across him while firing. There you go. I went ahead and hit him. May not have noticed, but as I was flying towards him, I was hitting my DMS left to switch through the gun profiles over here. Right now I have it on H64, as you can see SU25 at 15. You want to pick the profile that closely matches whatever target you're going after, which is why I put it on the H64, because that was a helo that I was engaging. Alright, finally I want to cover the landing procedures. Not the landing itself, but just the systems for it. First of all, we're going to begin by hitting Function 2 to go to the navigation page then switch to our CDU down here. From here we want to find the divert option and then this is going to be the list of the four closest airfields to you. This airfield here is the one we took off from and the one I want to return to. So I want to hit the OSB beside it which will now select that and make that my divert waypoint. As you can see up here it is now saying 62 that airfield is my current steer point. So you need to make sure that your steer point rotary is in the mission knob. This page here also gives you the two options for runway headings as well as the corresponding ILSs for those two headings and attack can if it has it as well as the tower frequencies to contact the tower. So when you contact the tower they're going to give you one of these runway headings to head to. So if they say 22 you'd put in this ILS and then if you needed to find the, ra the airfield and they had attack can you would input that frequency. To do that back here this is your ILS you would input the frequency so 10815. It's already on 108, so you'd rotate this knob to get to 15. 
and then right click this knob to turn the power on. This back here is going to be your attack hand radio. Same thing, you would input whatever frequency, whether or not it's X or Y, and then depending on whether or not it is a ground target, you would go to transmit receive. If it is an aircraft, if you're trying to find a tank or something, it's going to be air to air transmit and receive. In order to use these once they're powered on, at least the ILS, you come up here to the front, hit ILS, and then make sure to, if your bars are stowed, to enable them. And then as you approach the runway's glide slope, your bars will pop out, be here on the HSI, and you'll be good to go. And with that, this refresher course is concluded. If I missed anything or messed anything up, feel free to let me know in the comments. Hopefully the information I covered was enough to get you all back up to speed. As always, thank you for your time and attention, and happy hunting.